Hello and welcome back and today I want to discuss HexOS once again. Do you know it's been a year since it was made, well, available for users to engage with, to purchase and experiment with and over the course of the year we have seen a lot of updates. Indeed, here on the channel we have been making updates on the three month, six month mark as well as the Q2 and Q3 update. So, before you watch this video, keep in mind I'm not going to be discussing everything in big detail. I recommend you check out that Q2 and Q3 update video as well as a three and six month video because they will be highlighting bits and bobs from those. I'm not going to be getting into the weeds. This video is about how far they've come, where they're going, and hopefully by the end, whether it is worth engaging with HexOS. And before I forget, HexOS isn't paying for this video. They're seeing it at the same time you are. They've got no editorial control over this video whatsoever, but let's crack on. So I think it would be fair to say that in the one year since it was publicly available, HexOS, much like their early, you know, press staff and their posts and the interview we did with John, they're focusing on the fundamentals, which I don't think it's a bad thing, but I do think it does leave something of a nasty taste in the mouth, given it didn't arrive in public beta, it arrived in paid, essential early access form there. And I think when you are focusing on foundations, that does mean that what users are paying for, they're not really seeing any big features. They have been spending the year working on optimization, working on uh, performance improvements, resilience, um, stability, uh, and integrations with scale updates. Because although a lot of users, myself, I'm guilty of this, have long since associated um, HexOS as that software that Linus from Linus Tech Tips has been investing in at this point i think they have i think we can all have to agree it's moved a little bit beyond that i'm sure there's elements of creative input there outside of the hex os team when they do have investors from multiple sites but it at the moment i would say the biggest driving force by the looks of things seems to be open zfs slash ix systems and true nas and we'll get around to a big update on that later in the video the big main feature updates that have been added in a year are uh, manual pool creation. So although you have the automated system, you can now create uh, pools manually, as well as multiple pools for that matter as well. Alongside Image and Plex that were rolled out as the curated one-click apps that created a folder structure. Alongside that, they added uh, Jellyfin. There was Qubit, Torrent, Home Assistant, uh, and Sonar as well, and some of the splinters from that. Um, activity cards replaced the health card system in the GUI, uh, allowing users to get a much more dynamic idea of what the system is up to. Uh, the folder wizard, folder creation wizard there, and the folder large scale overview uh, got a bit of a tweak and features added to it, alongside encrypted areas as well. Um, then there was the custom community app uh, curation. I don't know if anyone knew uh, much about that or what the input is at the moment. People that were kind of uploading and presenting their layouts for applications uh, for uh, review and then hopefully they would get added as options uh, during installations. And that's really it. I mean, it sounds bad to say it when you really lay it out on a list like that when it comes to feature sets but there isn't a huge number of front end features that people are going to use short of, you know, IP tweaking and uh, upgrades and reshuffles in the first time, or they call it first flight, ultimately set up. Uh, there's not a huge amount more than that. Some of you are going to think I'm being tremendously unfair because they have had to get staffing together with that funding. They have, you know, changed a lot of the documentation on the website, the knowledge base there and the uh, release notes all being integrated into there, as well as a changing a lot of their testing regimens, their E2E -E and 2 n testing uh, regimen. They detailed a lot of that online, as well as a lot of the posts and updates about where they're going to go towards version 1.0, 1.1 and 1.2 and more on that in a bit. But I will say that in terms of front-end development, the last year has been a little underwhelming, I think, in the eyes of many. But it does come round to that point of foundations. They were clear about that. That was their intention. Now, let's talk about the big thing that everyone wants. Local access. Because right now, at the time of recording, and this is the 1st of December 2025... There's still no local UI access. You're still accessing it remotely via the HexOS site and the relay. So 
they have made it clear that they are targeting the end of Q1 2026. So that's January, March 2026 for that local access to be applied before they tick into HexOS 1.0. Sorry about my phone pinging there. So that's good news. There was no mention of a client application. It seems to be largely kind of browser based, you know, 1.192.168, etc. But still, that is something a lot of users have been waiting for for a very long time. Now, numerous members of the HexOS team have stated online that now that the foundations and the main core structure of HexOS is being put together and pretty much good to go, escalation of updates and features and integration with existing TrueNAS features is going to be accelerated in 2026. Now, we'll have to wait and see because there is mainly three other big core updates for 2026 and potentially 2027 that I'm going to talk about um, in the rest of this video. But still, how much of the alignment between updates as TrueNAS goes into like these big new bold versions and how much of that is going to be rolled back now the two are being developed in parallel it's going to be interesting to see how that rolls out because TrueNAS have a vested interest now in having HexOS there to present a much more user-friendly entry point into their systems um, but the three other core things in the future are the following number one any raid now any raid the um, background kind of build and how it worked with that lovely uh, tile system that allows users to mix and match drives something we've already seen with mini clusters uh, within raid groups um, on the likes of Synology Hybrid Raid uh, and TerraMasters T Raid system things that people have wanted for a long time but have never been available in an easy usable stable performing manner on a true NAS is something that any raid looks like it's going to solve. And uh, a chunk of the finance that was raised in HexOS has gone towards that project. There's no exclusivity. HexOS is not going to be the only way to get access to that. So how much of that comes back and forth in terms of that financing uh, in the long run for HexOS users, I'm going to be interested to see. But still, nonetheless, it is great to see TrueNAS integrating mixed drives, particularly with that huge scalability that TrueNAS and, in turn, HexOS provides there. Even up to this date, I've been using these two machines here to do a lot of my HexOS testing for those other videos. And these are largely SATA SSD and M.2 NVMe based, but I will be scaling it up and in time for that any RAID rollout. The thing is, we don't know when that will be. I don't know how much testing is going to happen in terms of the wider community as I've nailed down the mathematics, but hopefully, fingers crossed, any raid will be available for testing in 2026 or maybe 2027 for a lot of users. And again, HexOS will hopefully see the benefits of that at the same time as a true NAS mainline update. Now, the other two features to be discussed, one is Buddy Backups. That was a core demanded feature of HexOS because a lot of users want convenient system-to-system -system backups of either uh, servers within their own, and I use the phrase domain in the traditional sense, um, or just having friends that they can allow for encrypted one to uh, path to path or peer to peer even uh, backups there. Now, again, that has been targeted as a HexOS 1.1 update, so we're not going to be seeing it anytime soon. Um, next up, we could talk a little bit though, there about something that's rolling in for HexOS 1.2 update. So again, we are talking Q2, Q3, or even Q4 2026, and that is virtualization or a virtual machine tool, because I think it's fair to say that in the same way that applications have opened the gates for traditional non-techie users to use containerization, virtualization is actually becoming a great deal more accessible and desirable, particularly with remote work, particularly with single server management of multiple client devices in a home or office environment. Now, virtualization currently is strictly, when it comes to HexOS, when you're going to need to use the true NAS door. But they're saying within version 1.2, there will be integrating easy virtualization deployment in line with the ease of XOS and then TrueNAS in the background doing the old hard work. It will come down to curated uh, configurations, which I presume will allow for Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, etc. 
but also the ability to tweak them afterwards, much like they did with hard drives, uh, RAID configuration when they rolled out, but arguably it's going to be those profiles that are going to be difficult to nail down, and getting XOS to pass that through to TrueNAS seamlessly, well that's going to be another discussion there. But that's really it. Hex OS has seen most of its improvements happening in the surrounding platform that is Hex OS and also the background stability, performance and resilience of the platform as a whole. It's not sexy, it's not interesting, but arguably in the long term, it's stuff like this that years from now, if Hex is still with us in five to 10 years, that it will really have built a great base from. So there is importance to it. Now, in terms of pricing, one of the points I made in previous videos was if HexOS rolled out a Black Friday promo after doing a Black Friday promo in 2024, keeping that 199 price tag and then doing another one, I considered that a slap in the face to existing backers. And I'm pleased to say they didn't go with that. They didn't do a Black Friday, once again, $99 license. But I will say they did do some promos, one pro and two promos in particular that are going to be running until the end of the year. Now, these are, and I don't think these are as bad, I'll be honest with you, as if they had dropped the price to $99 and then screwed over about 11 months of existing backers. Um, what they're doing at the moment is if you already have Hex OS, you can get an additional license for $99. So again, it's not for new users, it's for existing users. And if you want to get two licenses, you can get two licenses for $299 there. So again, it's not quite the same deal as it was before. And again, they are talking about bulk. And I do think there will be some that won't be in love with this approach, particularly because this is still a product that hasn't hit 1.0 yet. But this is still a promo for those that are interested until the end of the year. And otherwise, the standard license is still 199. And of course, when HexOS rolls out in that 1.0 update in Q1 2026, that price will revert back to $299, which for me has always been quite a sticking point for software that isn't quite finished. This isn't Steam Early Access, but it kind of is. Bottom line, do I recommend HexOS one year on? I recommend it no more or less than I have done in any of my other videos. I think HexOS will be around in years to come. I really do. I think this project has got too much of a vested interest for iX Systems slash OpenZFS slash TrueNAS to not be an option because it is something that has been long demanded. I do think they are going to have to maybe ramp up that focus towards setup wizards and now they've nailed down the fundamentals some of the more complicated subjects of true nas that have really been a barrier for many need to be presented in hex os a great deal more because the bells and whistles that have been added thus far all seemingly feel like the first day or two of my private server ownership and after that point the money that I have spent, I don't think there's long-term value in Hex. I think there's long-term value in TrueNAS, but as it stands as a package right now, what Hex OS is providing you, although it is, you know, getting more and more stable, getting more and more optimized and more and more aligned with TrueNAS, for me, the true value of Hex OS beyond the first 24 to 48 hours of server ownership has yet to be realized. So as I say, my recommendation hasn't changed since my other videos. It's still, if you want to go down the true NAS route and you want your handheld during troubleshooting and on day one, HexOS is a great option. But if you're prepared to, if you're prepared to put in the time, if you've got, if you're money rich, time, I'm sorry, if you're money poor, time rich, this might not be for you. But. HexOS, one year on. What do you guys think? Have you been using it? It'd be great to talk about it below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.